Butt lovers. Today we are diving into and swimming into the wonderful world of goldfish crackers. Was that intro too cheesy? All right, I swear I'm done. First things first, how did I come up with this glorious and iconic idea? Many moons ago, I created the video, These Commercials Made Me Who I Am, where I reminisced about the Goldfish Crackers series. A, these commercials were so good, they convinced me I actually liked the snack as a child when I didn't. And two, or B, this commercial series has more episodes than most TV shows. This bitch has 57 episodes. So I watched every single commercial and I jotted down notable character moments as well as like different arcs. Be sure to check out the chapters and timestamps in this video because as well as plot stuff we're also going to be checking out a Wikipedia scandal as well as a lost website. First episode we have Finn and his brother Walter who he never reunites with. I hear you brother. It's giving me Captain Huggy Face vibes. But anyway, Finn ventures outside of the bag. He wants to, you know, expand his horizons and see what's out there in the world. The world, of course, currently being this boy's bedroom. And what's interesting about Finn being established as a main character so early on, because we're following his journey, his fish out of water story, is that we learn the least about him throughout this entire series. I'll get more into that later. Gilbert the pretzel goldfish is seen as very timid, and he originally comes from a plastic bag, or as he calls it, a plastic bag because he's a fucking nerd. We also meet Brooke, and then we see Extreme very in character doing stunts. He's flavor blasted, and he comes from the pantry, which we actually see later. It's the only origin story other than Finn's that we really see, and we see it more in depth. Oh my god, no spoilers. Don't get ahead of yourself. Season 1, episode 2, Gilbert says he hates square crackers. He's afraid of them, which is pretty ironic considering he's a cracker, and he's also a square. <laughs> Boom, roasted. Episode four, we see them after working out, they're all in a steam room, and when Brooke comes in, Gilbert turns into a quivering simp, girl power. Since when did the radiator go COVID? I don't understand why though, they're always naked. Also, if they live in a human world, how did they find towels that small? Moving on, we are already in season two. Season two establishes the vacuum as kind of like a villain, but Finn is incredibly open-minded. Maybe he's friendly. Definitely to a fault. We also see in that same episode that Gilbert's salt is removable from his body. So does that act like clothes? He also acts naked without the salt. So if his salt acts as the clothes, like I've been saying, the other ones are naked all the time. I do not have a life. I do not have a life. Here's where things start to get pretty spicy. Season two, episode three, Gilbert gets a tan and asks if it makes him look flavor blasted. Does this make me look flavor blasted? Ha <laughs> ha, ha. Well, I don't think I'm being dramatic when I say problematic alert. Why would you want to look like another type of goldfish, Gilbert? And listen to Extreme's uncomfortable reaction. <laughs> I am cringing. I got my eyes on you, Gilbert. Your meek demeanor does not fool me. Season three, episode one, there's about to be a talent show, and Gilbert says that his talent is getting rashes. God, your pathetic plus ratio plus quarantine away from me, you silly bitch. I mean, fish. <laughs> There is also a mysterious stranger that appears. What was that? There's only one way to find out. First cliffhanger, and also finally we're getting to the commercials that are not just character oriented. There's like ongoing storylines between commercials. Season three, episode two, we are now finally introduced to Swimmington Von Stuffington. It's Extreme's older brother. I am Swimmington Von Stuffington III. And he's British. I don't know how. They never explain why they have two different dialects. One of them's faking it. One thing to know about Extreme's brother Swimmington is that he is incredibly spoiled, treats Finn as a bellhop, demands a masseuse right away, kind of iconic. We also find out in season three, episode three, that Extreme's birth name is Fumbleton. Now, when Extreme kindly corrects his brother that he is going by a different name now, Swimmington keeps fucking calling him Fumbleton. Problematic alert? Even though their personalities clash, we really don't see where this animosity comes from otherwise. I think that it's just supposed to be implied that Swimmington thinks of him as his little brother, like baby brother. Oh, you don't know what you want when you do baby brother. He moved out of the house. You should know damn well that he's self-sufficient. You pompous bitch, I mean fish. I can't keep making that joke, although it is very good. I almost forgot to mention, after the reveal that they're brothers, this soap opera music plays. Brother, brother, brother. 
whoever's involved with these commercials is brilliant. And I tried to look up who's on the production team, the voice acting cast, all of these things. And how I usually find out my information is from Wikipedia and wiki articles. You can tell I was just an A++ student. But for once in my life, I question the credibility of the wiki. First of all, there is no wiki just for the Goldfish Crackers commercials. All of the characters are up on the Heroes wiki. They said that Finn's occupation was racial slurs, which is somebody who watched all the commercials, it's not. They also said that Brooke had invisible fat fucking fish tits. Now that one I can't verify because if they're invisible, like how, how am I gonna know? She very well could. Back to the canon, season three, episode five, we see that the pantry, you know, where Swimmington and Extreme came from, is actually a militant society. I'm not sure if this world has a Toy Story type logic, but I don't think it does considering they are not trying to hide. They don't care if they're seen. They're literally floating in the pantry next to generic brandless food items such as sweetest sweet sweet corn and baked beans. Speaking of sweetest sweet corny, season three, episode seven, the brothers feud is now wrapped up because Swimmington respects Extreme for doing a, a cool stunt. This isn't the character development I'm looking for. If you want character development though, the season three finale is a shocking turn of events. Gilbert not only pushes himself out of his comfort zone. I got this. X. I think that I want to try and get it this time. But he also pushes Extreme out of danger's way. I knew you could do it. He saved me. Sacrificing himself to the vacuum. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I truly wasn't expecting the Goldfish Crackers commercials to show the ugliest and most beautiful parts of ourselves. When we look in the mirror, will we see a snack that smiles back? We can but only if we keep working on ourselves, just as our hero Gilbert did. For Gilbert. On the bright side though, the season three finale shows that Brooke is a woman in STEM. Girl power, we love to see it. We could always use this. Like I said, I get up early. On the flip side, sorry to get negative again, but thus far the commercials have not passed the Bechtel test. We'll see if that changes. But speaking of super serious sexism, while I was doing my research on this, I discovered a very serious blog post from a mom talking about how disappointed she was in the lack of female representation in these Goldfish Crackers commercials without a hint of irony. I'm not joking. Let me read you some of it. When I created this blog, I wrote that I was going to rate kids' media and toys. I never considered blogging about sexism in food. Reese's Puffs, Special K, M&Ms, and Goldfish have unfortunately changed my mind. Well, I gotta look into her posts about the other foods as well, but let's just continue. My daughter and I have made up different names and stories for Goldfish, of course, but don't start telling me it's a free country and we can just make up anything we like. Give me something to work with here, Pepperidge Farm. I'm also, like most moms, busy. Can't I just read the damn names off the bag? It would be so much easier to foster creativity in kids and the adults that they will become if we weren't mired with the same old, ridiculous, gendered stereotypes narratives at every turn. Well said. And way to hit our top priority first. Also, may I just say, the title rubs me the wrong way. What does this mean? Season four's arc is entitled The Search for Gilbert, and in episode one, we are picking up where we left off after that really intense cliffhanger, and all of them look overjoyed to embark on this journey. These four radiate main character energy, and I bet they think nothing can go wrong. <laughs> It seems like they have a lot more to learn. It's a commercial made for kids, not a drama. What do you expect? For once in his life, Finn frowned. He pictured his friend alone, or worse, in smaller bite-sized pieces. He should have known his friend wasn't ready. Finn forced optimism as Brooke scream cried. He will do anything in his power to bring Gilbert home, dead or alive. I'm not entirely sure what that was, but I have to mention it once again. I already said this in the These Commercials Made Me Who I Am video, but the resolution got so much better. It really threw me off guard. It literally blew my mind in the last video. Let's see if the graphics look a bit clearer. Oh my God. This looks like it's a fucking movie. In season four, episode two, we see Gilbert in the vacuum and we meet IQ, a honeygram fish. When Gilbert exclaims to IQ that he needs to find his friends, IQ replies with, Would you settle for dust bunnies? A ha ha ha, cheap joke about, you know, being in a vacuum in the setting they're in, right? Wrong! IQ seems to be the only other goldfish there. Meaning, was he just alone this entire time? 
Also, okay, snapping back to reality for a second, but there's a whole village of goldfish under this kid's bed, and there's only two of them in the vacuum. Whoever's cleaning is doing such a shitty job. Season four, episode three, nothing really happens except we meet the goldfish that lives under the couch cushion, which is also his name that he's living up to. A lot of loners in this universe. Who can relate? Woo! Also, side note, I'm starting to ship Gilbert and IQ. That was cool! Try goldfish grams, baked with whole grain and a touch of sweetness. Don't fucking judge me. Season 4, episode 5. They found the message that Gilbert threw out of the vacuum cleaner, and while they were running away from this dog... Oh. Oh, you are slimed, brother! And now, brother, you are slimed. I feel like they must have played this before the KCAs or something. This is going to be the biggest, slimiest party ever! In the next episode, the Bloodhound is actually helping them. I don't know how they pulled that off. Do they speak the same language as the pets? Are the humans aware of the goldfish's existence and they treat them like pets? How do they not see over a hundred goldfish just chilling under the bed? And how are the goldfish not scared of the humans? It seems like we've never gotten to that logic. It seems like they're blissfully unaware that their purpose is to be eaten. Not to be morbid, but like, it's a snack. Season 4, episode 8, Gilbert's catapult works, he's out of the vacuum, and wow, he just abandoned IQ like it was nothing. I will remember you. The weirdest part is it seems like IQ was just totally okay with being left there alone. Not to judge, but I just can't believe IQ wanted to stay there. Like, I have severe dust allergies and they're acting up just looking at this shit. Season 4, episode 10, we also find out that the human has a pet lizard. I can't wait to see this world's version of Andy, and hopefully he doesn't look like that. Season finale, oh my gosh, he's home. Who the fuck is that goldfish that kissed Gilbert on the cheek? IQ's not gonna like this. I will from this point on, I get severely less interested in the goldfish characters and more about the human characters. Because, spoiler alert, the Gilbert arc is like the best thing to happen. But there's still some more notable things. For example, we just start season five and we already meet a new character. This is Coral. She wrote in on Mr. Fuzzy Face's hamster wheel. These guys have a lot of pets. Coral also comes from the younger sister's room. We didn't even know there was a younger sister till now. I wrote down here, I'm gonna be frank with you, I really don't care about the talent show. Oh my god, the talent show. Okay, so Gilbert sings, Brooke does magic, and Extreme, of course, does his stunts. But anyway, literally the only thing I'm interested in in this entire talent show is how the hell is Gilbert holding the microphone? How is this happening? I'm always left with more questions than answers, but I have to say, if he has, like, invisible arms, wouldn't that give more validity to the theory about Brooke's tits? I can't think about it. For those Wikipedia writers onto something? So you know how we've been in this kid's room this whole time? We find out that his name is Jamie. It's beautiful outside. Jamie, go out. Aside from kind of seeing the son and his mom in season six, episode one, we also get this weird word girl defining moment. I'm trepidatious. Triple what? It means scared. Brought me back. A lot of this season was them exploring the outside. <laughs> But I wasn't a big fan. But while they're outside, we discover that the humans also have turtles, a snake, and a cat. So many pets, bro. Then we go into their dream sequences. All of their subconsciences are just as jumbled up as mine. So each of these dreams is a mini art. So in Finn's dream, we actually fully see the kid Jamie. And the animation is not half bad. So in Finn's dream actually plays out, we see Finn take down his enemy that's trying to kill him. Trespassers will be vaporized. By giving him stickers. Amy. Me happy! Stickers make everyone happy! Finn is a Gary Sue. Let me explain what that trope is. The female equivalent of this is Mary Sue, and basically it's when a character is just so perfect, they're BORING! Snooze fest! Give me a Finn bully arc. Now in Brooke's dream, we see this. Madam President, there's trouble at the Washington Monument! Oh, oh, oh. Please, dear God, don't show Lin-Manuel Miranda the scene. How does a goldfish cracker grow up not to be a slacker and have a asker? We need your help, Brooke. Is this beard a bad look? Just like in the short about Finn's dream, we end up having another human reveal. Burr, 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 burr. Look at this menace of a toddler. In Xtreme's dream, he versus D. Wade in basketball. And for those of you uncultured like me, D. Wade is an actual basketball player. So this is like their Space Jam moment. We love a cameo. And in Swimmington's dream, it's revealed that he wanted a monkey wife. <laughs> Don't fret, my queen. I'm sure we'll meet again. <laughs> I don't 
don't know what to do with this information. That's also the only confirmed couple. Here's where things start to go really downhill, because if this isn't a product of its time. Oh, let's take some selfies. I got a selfie stick. I hear we're supposed to make a duck face. <laughs> Words cannot describe how much I hate this, but I prevailed in case anything crazy happened. Like, what if they got eaten? What if that, what if that's how it ended? You know, I have to know. Ladies and gentlemen, who the fuck am I kidding? Just ladies, this just in. It passed the Bechdel test right at the end there. Ooh, we were so close. It's called the internet. There's a lot of cats on it. Well, it was invented by cats for cats. Is the internet used for anything besides cat videos? No. Really? The last series of commercials was for a movie maker game that they had on their website. Speaking of the website, speaking of those games, you know how I said that the wiki was not very reliable, so I was still looking for better sources, and I found this website with all the characters and these cute little descriptions of them, and then I tried to go on there the next day, and it was taken down, guys. I don't know if they're just updating the website and they thought, okay, if it's down for a day, no one's gonna notice, and I was just making this fucking video, so of course I did. Or if literally the commercials ended now. I actually think the series might have just ended, because one of the last Movie Maker commercials came out in like 2019, 2020. I'm glad I caught the website and I recorded it. Maybe this will be a good source of like lost media. I wish I got to the game sooner. I literally, I refreshed and then it was gone. You know, it's like like when Club Penguin ended. End of an era. But this one was so subtle. They kind of snuck out, silent but deadly. And I was here, documenting it all. I deserve a fucking Emmy, really. Top-notch documentarianism. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know if I missed anything, if there's any other goldfish enthusiasts out there. Actually, I discovered as I was creating this video that somebody else made a goldfish lore video. I haven't watched it yet because I really didn't want to be like influenced by it. So I wonder if they found it any different leads, definitely gonna check that out after this is posted. So yes, good on ya. We're fighting the good fight and really talking about the things that matter, dude. Have a great day, butt lovers. Stay safe out there. Watch out for the vacuum. Bye!